Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, December 11th, 2023. Let's get into it. So uh, I was making a video uh, about uh, how the media deceives you with how they present the facts on everything. And uh, I was out in the forest and <laughs> we got rained on. <laughs> and he came home a muddy mess, so I had to give him a bath. So he's a wet rag right now, but uh, he's, still the, he's still the boo dog, the boo dog. So the first thing, I want to get that video out of the way. So I'm out walking the dog. There he is in all his glory. But I wanted to make a quick talking video. So uh, trying this in Ultra HD 30. We'll see how this turns out. So I always like to let you know the settings so that if you do make your own videos, we'll see how this turns out. And I'm not using Super Steady. So I don't know, because the lighting here is kind of dim. And that's why I'm going with 30 instead of 60. So let's see. What first thing I wanted to talk about is how you get manipulated by the media. So I'm listening to the news and they come out and they said that the UN rejected the uh, ceasefire in Gaza. The UN. <laughs> you see how you led and you deceived? The context of that, that, it wasn't the UN, it was the United States. The United States was the only vote in every, 133 countries voted for you know, the uh, ceasefire and the United States vetoed it. So when they say the UN, they should say that even, even Great Britain abstained. So it was, it was the United States. So you see how you misled the UN rejected the ceasefire agreement. The next uh, phrase that I got from the news report, they said that, uh, you know, they didn't, because they didn't want to stop the collective punishment of the, uh, of the Palestinians. The collective punishment, and that, doesn't that sound, collective punishment sounds to me like you got four or five people and you line them up and you, and you spank them, right? You know, that's co collective punishment. That's kind of a nice way of putting it. Instead of saying the death of tens of thousands of children in the, in, in the extermination of the Palestinians, that would be a better way to put it rather than collective punishment. Hmm, just sounds... Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds good. Uh, because I, I got another factoid uh, to add to that video was, um, you know, when you hear the media report on what Israel is doing to the Palestinians, they always say the war against Hamas, the war against Hamas. Hamas is down in their tunnels, man. <laughs> so every bomb, there was two, well, I think they reported 200 bombs dropped today. Do you think that really killed a single Hamas soldier? It might have. I, I, I kind of doubt it. I, I think that the, but it certainly killed a hell of a lot of Palestinians and Palestinian children and Palestinian women. So, you know, when they, when they say that uh, the war against Hamas, no, it's the war against the Palestinians. It's the extermination of the Palestinians. And I'm going to continue with that on my videos. I know that uh, gets, turn pe turns people off. So uh, let's just get into the news. Uh, I've got a, a few things here, uh, and then we'll get into a couple of tweets. Um, China just bought another 600 tons of gold. <laughs> so don't tell me they're not going to be putting their currency on some sort of gold standard as they get away from the dollar, as the whole world gets away from the dollar. And believe me, that's going to blow back on, on us here in the United States big time. Uh, Russia is advancing on all fronts. I don't know if you've watched... Uh, any of the YouTube channels, but uh, pretty much everywhere the Ukrainians are, are folding. And I say folding, I mean, my God, I don't even know why they're fighting anymore. In fact, let's, let's get to the first uh, tweet right here, is, is since I got into that. Uh, and this is Geoman on, uh, on X. Uh, he says, my dear Ukrainians, I told you many times you do not die for Ukraine. You die for BlackRock and the corrupt Bandera Nazi gang in Kiev and then he goes into uh, Our source in the OP. I'm not sure what the OP is. Maybe somebody tell me what this said that Andre Andre, excuse me, Air, Airmark Flew to the United States to meet with the management of BlackRock to whom he offered a full package of opportunities in Ukraine We are ready to give up all strategic enterprises and land if the Corporation helps to obtain a new package of military and financial assistance. And to which I replied, 
so much death for all the wrong reasons. And, uh, and that's what we're seeing in Ukraine. They're dying for the uh, neocons. They're dying for the globalists. They're dying for BlackRock, but they're not dying for Ukraine. Ukraine is going to come out of this uh, shell of what it used to be. Uh, so then uh, we get into energy stocks. Uh, right now, I don't know if you've been following, and I've been saying that gas prices were going to go up and up and up and up. Well, the economy's so bad right now, nobody's buying much fuel. I know I'm not. I'm using mostly electric. And, uh, you know, of course, I engineered myself into this place, but I imagine most people hadn't. Uh, and, of course, we're not refilling the strategic oil reserves. No, no, the Biden administration want to do that as they destroy the United States. Uh, but you might want to give energy stocks a quick look. I haven't uh, run the ticker symbols. Uh, I always like uh, Shell, uh, Chevron. Uh, you got Exxon Mobil. Uh, you know, X XOM. Uh, you know, I, but I keep saying I, th I think we're going to see a huge plunge in the stock market, and that should take those energy stocks down but if you wait too long and the gas prices go up because right now saudi arabia and opec they just met and they're talking about cutting oil production again because the prices are too low so yeah we're down right now but i think probably you're going to get it to go up again i uh, by the way in, wasn't the timing of my video on alex jones with the tucker carlson inter interview uh, amazing alex jones Alex Jones, the most censored man on the planet, next to Julian Assange, is back on X. And in fact, I was looking, and I haven't watched the interview yet, but I think he did an interview with Elon Musk. So Elon and Alex Jones got together, and uh, that's one of the first tweets. He's blowing up. I mean, can you imagine? I got, what, 600 followers on X. <laughs> He's got 1.2 million followers in, what, a single day. Uh, Alex Jones is back. I like Alex Jones. I think he's called a lot of things right. A lot of people hate him, you know, because the deep state was against him. And, he's, they, you know, he's got a billion dollars that he owes to the uh, uh, in lawsuits. Uh, it's just ridiculous what they've done to him. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, well, one person put out a tweet that said the Democrats love war and the deep state uh, Biden administration is weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> Have you ever watched the movie Weekend at Bernie's? Because, uh, well, from what the interview, you know, they're, they're injecting him with drugs to get him up to uh, to uh, talk to to it, the American people whenever he makes a statement and his bumbling statements. But let's get back to the bookmarks. Um, Kim Iverson, uh, the Israeli study concludes this war is worse than any other including World War II, which means the United States is standing aside and allowing Israel to commit a holocaust against an imprisoned people they don't want on their land. Now, these are her words. I tend to agree with most of what she said. It is a holocaust. It's an exterm... Well, it, I wouldn't call it a holocaust. It's an extermination, you know. Uh, but, yeah, I guess the, the phraseology is there. At the UN Security Council, France, Switzerland, Japan, China, and Russia all voted to stop this war. Even the Brits wanted to stop it, but didn't want to upset the U.S., so they're cowardly abstained from voting. Now, you'll watch that in, my, in the video. But wait, let's, get, let's get to that video. I'm sorry. The next thing that got me was uh, I'm listening to the, uh, I can't remember, it's uh, Judicial Watch on the radio. Of course, for Freedom Watch, I think is what they're called. And he was talking about the anti-Semitism on these Ivy League campuses. And if you watch my last video, I was talking about the fact that calling somebody a name is okay. You can call me asshole anytime you want. Everybody does. Everybody calls me an asshole. And I, but a kid was suspended from one of the Ivy League campuses for calling a black person a white, a water buffalo. <laughs> Can you imagine? Call him a water buffalo. I think that's freaking hilarious. But they got suspended because they said that that was racist. You're racist, so you can't call black people water buffaloes. You know, but you can call a white person a honky or a uh, or an asshole. So there you go. You know, that was the first one. The second thing that got to me was uh, that I don't understand is if there is because uh, there's a difference between calling somebody a name and a threat or harassment. Okay, those are three different things. And of course, harassment and threatening usually go side by side. So, <clears throat> you know, a threat, like, let's, let's just use the phrase, hey man, watch your back. Now, that's, uh, that's just a, that's not a threat, right? 
that's uh, that's just somebody saying, hey man, you know, you know, you, it's, a, it's a tough world, or you're going into a tight situation. Watch your back. Now it's different when you say, watch your back. I know where you live. See it. See the context. That's a threat. You can't say that to somebody. Well, you can, and if you're a Democrat, you can say that to a Republican. But, but anyway, so that's a that, that's see how the the context means everything. Now, if these Jews are being threatened, you know, I know where you live, Jew. They, that is anti-Semitism. Okay, that is anti-Semitism. So yes, that type of speech should not be allowed because it's a threat. You understand? Just like going online and saying you're going to blow something up, you know, that's a threat. Or you're going to shoot somebody, that's a threat. You know, it's saying you're going to shoot somebody, you know. So you got you to gotta get the context around the language, you know. To call a Jew, you, you damn Jew, you know, that's, that's fine. You know, I would never do that, but I mean, you know, what the hell. It's, uh, as you just calling them a name, you're not threatening them or you're harassing them. So that was the next thing. But the thing that got me was if the Jews are being threatened at these Ivy League schools and their parents are paying upwards of $100,000 um, um, from what I understand, either for semester or for the year for the, their, their kid to go to the school only to be harassed or threatened. If you're a Jew, why are you sending your <laughs> kid to an Ivy League school? I always send them you know, to a state-run school. I, I, I imagine James Madison University, for example, that's where, you know, that's a great school, or, uh, or Virginia Tech, or um, NC State, uh, you know, Jesus, I, you know, why in the world are you paying $100,000 for your kid to get harassed and threatened and possibly beaten up? Hell, maybe even killed some of these uh, left-wing radicals. You never know what they're going to do, right? So that's the first thing, but I understand why they do it, because if you graduate from an Ivy League school, you get the golden parachute. In other words, you know, you're usually going to get a job at one of the big corporations. Just You could be the dumbest person on the planet, but you'll get that job because you graduated from Harvard or, or uh, whatever, you know, any of the Ivy League schools. So that's, uh, and that's the reason I'm sure that these Jewish parents are sending their kids there. But once again, you know, why are you, I mean, if your kid is threatened and it, they could be physically harmed, why are you paying hundred thousand dollars for that if you're Jewish? I don't understand. Maybe somebody explain it to me in the comments below. There you go. So that was my outdoor video. Uh, just how bad is Gaza? A study concluded that the civilian proportion of deaths is higher than in all of world conflicts in the 20th century. So there you go. Anybody that's for the extermination of the Palestinians, I, I stand against you. Uh, this is Megatron. Megatron on uh, X. Uh, when the ICC investigates Israel, it's pure anti-Semitism, says Netanyahu. This man killed 17,000 Palestinians in just two months, 8,000 of them children, 46,000 wounded, hundreds were UN workers, doctors, nurses, journalists, and they're all dead. The only such war criminal and savage I can think of was Hitler. Correct me if I'm wrong. So, yeah, I'll continue with my, my coverage of the, uh, the war. Disgusting. Kim Everson. The result of the security, UN Security Council vote for a ceasefire in Gaza proposed by the UAE. Against it, one vote. For it, 13 votes. There you go. All right. So, and I talked about that in the other video. Uh, let's keep going with the news. Uh, good Lord. Uh, China's financial markets are collapsing. Uh, from what I can tell, and uh, that should affect the rest of the world, but then they're just going to revalue onto gold, obviously, if they're buying 600 tons of gold, so we'll see where that, that goes. Good Lord, the U.S. debt clock. Have you looked at that recently? <laughs> Holy shit. I, 34 trillion now. It's gone up 2 trillion in, what, a couple of months? I mean, don't tell me we're not going to have hyperinflation here. So the Federal Reserve will have to monetize the debt, which means bank bail-ins. So if you've got money in the bank, it ain't safe, man. You need to, to at least pull out a nice substantial cash position. Of course, if the dollar devalues, it's not going to matter. But you need to buy up assets. And I've listed a number of assets. In fact, I've got a new one for you here in just a minute. Let's bait that to the end of the video. Uh, new mortgages uh, with the new high interest rates are averaging 
$3,000 a month. <laughs> Who the hell can afford that? If I guess if you're making $200,000, $300,000 a year, but you know when you when you can bank in that it's not just a three thousand dollars a month mortgage payment. You got your your taxes. You've got your uh, mortgage uh, insurance. Uh, you know, uh, my God, I, I don't. I, I can't even imagine how anybody's buying a house right now, other than they're they're an idiot. You know, I and, and so I've I've done videos on this about alternatives. I mean, what can you do, especially if you're a young person? A trailer park. I like the trailer parks. Usually you can get into a trailer and, and rent it, and it's not a bad place to live, assuming that it doesn't leak, and um, some of them are in bad shape, and there are some drug addicts and stuff that live in these trailer parks. You're going to have to search around and find a good one, but I mean, usually you can rent them for under $1,000, which is a lot cheaper than an apartment right now, you know, and, it, and then there's always the option of, of buying a little piece of land out in the country. Uh, if you've got a little bit of cash on the side and just stick a trailer on it and hopefully you can bring in some electricity and water. I mean, I know that's that gets expensive. Um, uh, credit card borrowing is at an all-time high. So everybody's borrowing on their credit cards to pay their bills. Please, God, don't do that. You're paying 28%, and if you've got investments, you're earning 5%. It tops. Maybe two, just 2 or 3%. You know, I'm just kind of maintaining the status quo. Uh, gold hit a all time high. Will silver follow? I, and so I wanted to throw this out. Silver actually dropped a little bit. It's 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 a good purchase right now. I can't do anything. I don't have the money, but you might want to look at it. Uh, it was at it's under twenty four dollars again. Uh, and uh, SD Bullion has the uh, uh, Britannicas uh, on sale. And uh, and but I wanted to tell you to wait till Monday. Wait till Monday, and uh, they might uh, run a. They usually run a sale on Monday. And I, uh, but I mean, you know, then you're going to say, well, that cyber security guy price went up $2 on silver before I could buy it. Uh, you make your own decision. So now we get to the last thing on the video. And this was a, a YouTuber who recommended this. I have not even looked into it, but he did say that Bill Gates and uh, uh, Bezos and a couple of the big names are investing in this stock. So U R E K F. U R E K F Lithium, and that's a Canada company that's going to be mining. Well, they've they've got prospects of mining some lithium. Now you could lose, you'll lose all your money. Don't listen to me. Uh, but you know it's it's at thirty eight cents right now. You know, and, and that's what I do. I throw out money on these uh, mining positions, and I don't you you nibble away at it. You know, each month I might just throw three or four hundred dollars on these penny stocks and. Uh, like I said, the, the greatest amount of money I ever made was on a penny stock. And uh, it, it offset all my losses in my entire portfolio. So if you hit one, you know, you, you can be off to the races, but you certainly don't throw all your money at it. And you know, just nibble away at some of these positions. Uh, Rick Rule is a great person to run some of these ticker symbols by. He's, he's got a free analysis of the ticker symbols. And then the, there's also, uh, and I got a find out what this um i was watching a video uh bubba bubba trading.com and he says he's got a free book on uh trading options and that's something i've really really wanted to look into and uh uh if you watch the economic ninja and some of these youtube channels they're offering courses that you have to buy but it sounds like this guy's been in the business for like 40 years and he's just he's offering his book for free it's a pdf you know you're not going to get the printed copy and uh, so I'm going to look into that. And uh, oh, last thing is the um, the solar panels on the house. And I said I, I will be doing a video on that. So a little more information on putting solar on your house. OK, I do think it added to the uh, uh, structure of my house. So that's a positive thing. Uh, when I looked at the billing on it, what happens is that the salesman, of course, lied to me, as salesmen all do. And uh, what happens is you're on a graduated uh, uh increasing amount that you have to pay each year so the first year it's like 83 dollars a month well i'm paying 150 200 300 in the summertime so 83 dollars a month is going to save me a hell of a lot of money next year so then it goes to the next year it goes up a certain amount so you might be paying a hundred dollars a month then it's 120 dollars a month then it's 100 but when you consider inflation's running at what good god you know 20 percent right now or 14 percent or whatever you want to whatever figure you want to put on it don't believe anything the government tells you 
you know, so so you can kind of see, I think the solar option is going to work out. And But I don't have all the information yet, so I can't do a video on that. Uh, God knows, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, anyway, I guess that's it. Peace out. Stay free. Say hi to the boo dog. The, the wet boo dog. The, the nasty boo dog. He, I, he does smell good, though. I tell you, it was dog shampoo. Say hi to boo. Say hi. I'm trying not to show his doodads here. Say hi. All right. You can run on for a long time, run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.